Hi everybody, this is a really interesting book written in Portuguese, published in Brazil, about the Tejeros of Egungung, the ancestral um, worship spaces in Brazil, dedicated specifically to the cults of the Egung. And um, within the Brazilian Candomblé houses of worship, there is a, quite a clear division between male ancestors who are venerated through Egungung, masquerading, and have um, principally male orders of initiation. There are places, of course, for women, however, and for female deities. However, uh, the, the structure of Egungung worship is principally around uh, major male ancestors, and the complement to that are the Iami for the ancestral female powers. Uh, what I like about this book is that it has uh, the lineages of the Egungun Tejeros. It speaks about the sacred grove of Egungung, the Igbale. It talks about Oya's presence and place, especially the road or camino of Oya Ibale, who dresses in white and presides over the Asheshe or funeral ceremonies as well. And this particular Oya Ibale has a special place within the Egungung uh, Tejeros and means of worship. So it does cover a lot of the, the principal figures of um, Egungung priests titles, duties, it talks about the geographical areas of Egungung worship. Uh, one of the longest running commentaries and debates about uh, ancestral worship and these masquerading cults in Brazil are, are they relatively recent or are they, uh, have they been inherited and generated since the times of slavery in Brazil, because one of the major differences between uh, Cuba and Brazil in terms of Orisha worship is that Brazil were Brazilian Orisha worshippers were a lot. Uh, they were a lot. They're more able to keep ties with uh, West Africa, with Yoruba land, Yoruba land, so that um, people ideas goods flew, uh, flowed back and forth between and across the Atlantic between these two areas. So maintaining uh, ties to uh, West Africa was implicit over the centuries and over the years for Afro-Brazilian practitioners, not so much within Cuba. Um, so one of the debates within Afro-Brazilian religious practices centers on Egungung and whether uh, the masquerading traditions were reintroduced in the 19th and 20th century to Brazil or have they always been present. Um, so that does that is discussed a little bit about it within this volume. Uh, it's a little hard to get I'm sorry but I at least I'm I'm hoping that you can see some of this work so that you can have an idea um, or what it contains and if you are lucky enough to be able to acquire it uh, I think it's well worth it and you should try and pick it up and uh, learn a little bit about the, the, the intricate ceremonies uh, and um, structure of Egungung worship. It's, it's also interesting to note that within the Egungung Tejeros the Orisha Olokung plays a significant role. And for Afro-Cuban Lukumi worshippers, we know that, uh, or we venerate Olokung as one of the guardians of souls on their transition to and from earth and heaven, uh, mediated through water. So that's also something that you can read about here. And I look forward to the next blog. Thank you very much.